Hi, welcome to this exciting video about max UFR, the maximum amount of fluid we can remove in a given treatment. And we're going to we're going to work out some problems together. And then after we do that, we'll talk more about why we need these and like to keep it simple. It's it's for safety. It's for safety and there's a lot of research that says if we remove more than I believe it's 13 mils per kilogram per hour during a given treatment there's more risk for death and hospitalizations but let's let's have some fun first with these maximum UFR maximum amount of fluid that we can remove during a given treatment so let's just take an order so you'll you you have your orders up and you have somebody that has a weight of 82 kilograms they're on the machine for 3.5 hours and the doctor writes max UFR of 10 mils per kilogram per hour. And you're like, I don't even know where to start. And that's okay. Let's just first look at what we know, okay? Because that's going to give us a lot of answers right away. We know that the patient is 82 kilograms, treatment is 3.5 hours, and we have the max amount of fluid we can remove. So now what we're looking for is the maximum amount of fluid that we can remove during treatment. So we're gonna, so like the maximum amount of fluid is usually in mils. So we want mils over treatment. Max amount of fluid we can remove per treatment. And how do we get that answer? How do we get that solution? So I'm going to write down their weight, 82 kilograms. So 82 times 10 equals 820 mils per hour and now we need to know per treatment so we have a 3.5 hour treatment so it's going to be 820 times 3.5 so the maximum amount of fluid we can remove during treatment their goal we can set at is 2870 mils for the treatment and that'll equal 820 mils per hour Okay, uh, we can also check our work. So now we can kind of work backwards. We have 2870. So let's divide that by 3.5. Okay, we got 820 and we're gonna divide that by 10. We got 82 and that's their weight. Okay, great Lindsay, but let's, let's do a harder one. We can do that. Let's say somebody comes in at like 110 kilograms and they're on the machine for four hours. So we have a four hour treatment and their maximum amount of maximum amount of fluid removal reads 11 mils per kilogram per hour. So we're going to write down what we're looking for. We're looking for mils per treatment equals. So I've got 110 kilograms times 11 mils and that's going to give me mils how much I can remove per hour. So 110 times 11. So I can do 1210 mils per hour. And now they're on the treatment for four hours. So we can just multiply that by four. So the maximum amount of fluid we can remove for this person is 4840 mils per treatment. Awesome. We can check our work again. This time I'll divide by 11 and then I'll divide by four. And I got 110 kilos. Okay. You guys want to do one more? Why not? The ones that always get me, like these people come in and they're small, but they have high fluid gains and I want to remove like three liters, but you know, like three, three liters over three and a half hours, that should be, that should, that should be well within the limits of my maximum UFR. So let's try it. So let's say we have somebody at 65 kilograms. They're on the machine for 3.5 hours and their maximum fluid we can remove per treatment is 12 mils per kilogram per hour. So again, we're looking for mils. Let's do this one a little differently. So let's start with mils per hour. How many mils can we remove per hour? So I'm gonna match up the mil to the mil because that's what we're looking for, 12 mils per one hour times 65 kilograms. So 12 mils times 65, 12 times 65. So 780 mils per hour, and I'm gonna multiply that by, I guess I, that's how I've been doing it all along, but that's okay. 780 times 3.5 times 3.5, 2730. So I thought that I could easily remove three liters from somebody that, um, 
from somebody that weighs 65 kilograms, but it turns out the maximum amount of fluid I can remove is 2,730 mils. So let me see, let's do it a little differently. Somebody is on the machine for three hours and 15 minutes. So that's 3.25 3 hours. They weigh 90 kilograms and their max UFR is, let's, let's go back to 11 mils per kilogram per hour. All right, again, I'm looking for mils per treatment. And I know I've got 11 mils. I'm gonna match those up. Let's do it like this. 11 mils times 90 kilograms. We've got 11 times 90. So that's 990 mils per hour times 3.25 hours equals 32, 17.5. How fun. Okay, so now we've gotten some good practice at calculating max UFRs and I really need to mat watch the max UFRs on our, our smaller patients because I think that three liters isn't a lot for them and it turns out it is. So now let's talk about why. Why do these patients, when I first started in 2016, maximum goals were, were new. They were just coming in and the patients were still getting used to them and so were the nurses and it was a, a challenge. But seven years later, it's be, it's become the norm. Everybody on their, every Pretty much every patient that I take care of has a maximum amount of fluid removal. And it's for safety because if somebody is weighing, let's do the 65 kilogram person, and they're just, they're smaller. So like the fluid is just more condensed in there. So they're filled with fluid. So if somebody is 65 kilograms and you know, their dry weight is 60 kilograms. So they're five kilograms over their dry weight. So I'm like, God, I need to get this fluid off. They're short of breath, they have edema, and uh, you know, their shoes don't fit. And they're coming in huffing and puffing. So I'm like, oh my God, I wanna get, I wanna get this off. I'm gonna set them for five, five liters in this three and a half hour treatment. And that's, that is very risky because it's, it's, um, you think, I always like to talk about a balloon, how, you know, the heart is like a balloon and people drink water in between treatments and maybe they drink too much water or they have too much salt and they're not urinating that fluid out. So now everything is getting, everything's like, it's gotta fit in your body because it can't go anywhere. So it gets, shows up as edema, it shows up as shortness of breath in the lungs, and then it also shows up with high blood pressure because there's just more fluid and there's more water going through through those vessels, you know, like a, like a hose. Like the more water you have in that hose, the more pressure you have. And then the heart is like a balloon. So you stretch out a balloon and then you let out all the air. Or like if it's a water balloon, you let out all the water. Like the balloon never goes to the same shape it was before, before you filled it up with air or water. So it's the same with the heart. So if we're filling up this heart, this body with, with water, and then all of a sudden we, we take off all this water really quickly, all of a sudden the heart goes back down and that can lead to arrhythmias. It can lead to like dangerous uh, cardiac rhythms that can be very dangerous for the patient and long-term it's, it's risky. So we want to remove that fluid slowly so that they tolerate it better. And this comes from a lot of research. Like it seems like common sense now, but because of all of the data that all of the dialysis clinics send to Medicare and that goes to the National Kidney Foundation. They have so much data that turns into so much research and that turns into our best practice. And all of the data shows that when we go over these maximum fluid removal rates, these patients are more likely to end up in the hospital or die sooner. They just, they don't live as long on dialysis than those that have these maximum fluid removal rates. So that's kind of cool, something that comes out of research. So instead of me saying that I need to get this five liters off of this guy today who is having symptoms, I know that I can safely remove 2,730 mils today and you'll probably have to come in for an extra treatment. What if they're coming in for an extra treatment all the time? It's so hard to get the fluid off of this guy. So that might be when it's time to increase their treatment time because of their fluid gains. Like even though he's 65 kilograms, he's probably getting his blood cleaned enough during the like a three hour or three and a half hour treatment, but this time we're not getting the fluid off that we need. So generally somebody, if we're doing 65 kilograms with a max 
um, fluid removal rate of 12 mils per kilogram per hour, like we said before, it was 2,730 mils per treatment. So what happens if we go from 3.5 to four hours? How much more fluid can we get off in four hours? So let's, let's do the math. So it's gonna be 65 times 12 times four. 3120, 3120. So 3120 minus 2730 equals 390. It's an extra 390. It seems kind of like like chump change to me, but in the, in our smaller patients, that makes a big difference with fluid removal, from my experience anyway. So I hope that this helps you. Just to kind of recap, I like to write down what I know. I know their weight, I know their treatment time, and then I know the max rate. And it's really nice when some patients, their max fluid removal is just 3,000 mils per treatment. I don't have to do any math, but sometimes it's not. The other thing is to, to be mindful of at your clinic when you're doing this is if your policy says that you calculate the max goal from their dry weight. So if their dry weight 60, is that where I calculate their max goal? Or do I calculate their max goal from the weight they come into today? So that is something to check with your facility policy about, or just maybe even what the provider's preference is. Um, I, as a general kind of where I've worked in my experience, we can take it from the weight they come in at, so it changes. Awesome. So now we can see that maximum US goals are safe and fun. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. <music>